Missed call. Stop calling me when I'm filming. How about that? Hello everybody, it's your girl Jay and today I am here with my July wrap up for 2021. I read a total of 11 books this month. One of them is a textbook that I had to read front to back for my college class so I won't be talking about that because literally nobody cares but I will be talking about the first of five books that I read for this month so without further ado let us get started. Wow. So the first book that I read is Neon Gods by Kate Robert. I gave this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I had to read it because literally everybody on booktube was reading it so I wanted to be a part of the hype wagon and like I said 4.5 out of 5 stars. I really loved this one. This follows young socialite Persephone who wants nothing more than to leave Olympus and start a new life. She is blindsided by her mother when she announces her upcoming engagement to Zeus, head of Olympus, and so she decides that she is going to flee to the underworld. After crossing the river Styx, Persephone makes a deal with Hades, the ruler of the Undercity, and he wants nothing more than to get his revenge on Zeus who caused the death of his parents years ago and it's kind of the story of this deal between the two of them but it is a grand old time. So this is obviously a take on the classic Persephone and Hades myth. The parallels between the original myth and this new story were very unique and I really liked the way that it was incorporated into the story. I thought this was super addictive and fast-paced and just a lot of fun to read. I really liked Persephone and Hades together. They are the epitome of the sunshine and grumpy trope which I personally love so much so I loved reading about them. Not to mention that the chemistry between the two was just chef's kiss. I loved it so much. I was a little bit confused about why everybody, including Persephone in Olympus, were believing that Hades was a myth and I wish that we kind of got more backstory on that. But I think that was really the only complaint that I had about the book. I also really enjoyed the tension that was between Hades and everybody else in the 13. I just thought that overall this book was a lot of fun and I definitely will be checking out more of Kate Roberts books because like I I said grand old time 4.5 out of 5 stars next up i have the truth about forever by sarah Dessen. i ended up giving this a 2.5 out of 5 stars which kind of sucked but this follows macy who is struggling with the death of her father she thought that her summer was going to be rather uneventful her boyfriend is going off to a summer camp for nerds basically and so she is taking over his job at the library and that's when a group of ragtag misfits enter her life in the form Form of a catering company and she basically turns her uneventful summer into uneventful summer. The concept of this is, you know, your typical Sarah Dustin book. I usually give Sarah Dessen books around a 3, 3.5. So this one definitely fell short for me. It was just mostly forgettable in my opinion. I finished this on like the second day of July and I honestly could not tell you anything about this story other than there was a catering group that I really enjoyed those characters. Macy was pretty annoying, but I did like how much she grew by the end of the story. Jason, who was Macy's boyfriend, really sucked. I hated him and her her mother was not much better, so they definitely brought my enjoyment of the story down a lot. And then the love interest, Wes, was literally just Macy in boy form. They had the exact same life story. And personally, I just found that their chemistry was non-existent, so I didn't enjoy the romance aspect of this, which was a big part of it, so... Yeah, 2.5 out of 5 stars. I just didn't care about this book. The next book I have is Sweet and Bitter Magic by Adrian Tooley. I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This follows Tamsin, who is a young and powerful witch who has been cursed with the inability to feel love, as well as it being banished from the magical community after she used dark magic. In order to feel any sort of love, she has to trade her magical powers in exchange for for the taste of 
the love of somebody else. So when a plague hits the new town that she is living in, a girl named Ren shows up on Tamsin's doorstep and bargains the love of her father in exchange for the stopping of the plague and it's like the story of that. I definitely think that my expectations for this book were way higher than they should have been. I thought I was going to absolutely love this. Although I did enjoy it, I didn't love it like I thought I would. I thought that the world building was a bit lacking and that the magic system wasn't fully explored to the extent that it could have been. The romance was extremely, extremely slow burn. It was an enemies to lovers, which I like, but like I said, it was extremely slow. I'm a fan of slow burn, but not this slow. The book is definitely character driven. I think that both Ren and Tamsin were really interesting to learn more about. I think that the inclusion of the diary was a really interesting way to tell Tamsin's backstory, so I definitely enjoyed that aspect of the book. Ren was also an interesting character, but her naivety was a little bit annoying at times. Overall, the book was rather predictable, but I still had a fun time reading it. It was enjoyable, so 3.5 out of 5 stars. The next book I read is For the Wolf by Hannah Witten. I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. So this book follows Red, who is is the second daughter to the queen, which means that she is the next sacrifice for the wilder woods and the wolf in the hopes that he will return the captured gods of the world. Upon entering the woods, Red discovers that the wolf is actually a lot more man than she anticipated and also a lot sweeter than she thought. As she spends more time in the woods, she realizes that the power that she's been hiding for years may not be the curse that she once believed and may actually be the key to saving the world. I originally thought that this was a Little Red Riding Hood retelling, so I was pleasantly surprised to realize that it's actually more similar to Beauty and the Beast. I do think that the book dragged in parts and I became bored, but there were also some parts that I was fully invested in. This is another slow burn romance and I did really enjoy it although I do think that they really lacked in communication and that was annoying at times. I think that the wolf was the most intriguing character to me. I was very invested in learning more about his backstory. I think that the magic system was really interesting but also very confusing. I didn't really understand it for the most part but I was still very intrigued by it. Also I think Neve is the worst. The second book I believe is following Neve's story. So I am intrigued to read it, but also I kind of really dislike her. So we'll see how that goes. But overall, I did enjoy this book. I gave it a four out of five stars. I definitely recommend you check it out because it's pretty hyped on booktube right now, but it's well worth the read. And then the final book that I'm going to talk about for this part of the wrap-up is The Stranger in the Mirror by Liv Constantine. This follows Addison, who is about to be married to a man she loves very dearly. She should be excited, but the only problem is, is that she has no memory of who she was before she was hit on the head and woke up bleeding on the side of the road. She is convinced that something terrible happened to her two years prior when she ended up on the side of the road, but she has no way of discovering what it might be. And then it also follows Julian, whose wife, Cassandra, went missing two years ago, leaving him alone with their seven-year-old daughter, and he will stop at nothing in order to find her. And it's like the story of how those two stories interweave together. Like I said, I gave this a four out of five stars. I personally found it very enjoyable. It was definitely not exactly believable, the events that took place, but it's still a really good time. The book is told in three points of views, which I was fully invested in, in all three of them. I am a sucker for unreliable narrators, so Addison was perfect for my liking. I really liked the writing style, and I actually didn't know that Liv Constantine is actually two sisters you definitely cannot tell that it is two different people writing the book so I really enjoyed that and discovering that fact the book is an extremely quick read because you don't want to put it down. You want to keep reading to try to figure out what the heck is going on. Definitely recommend it if you're into thrillers, but you definitely need to be able to suspend your believability in what's taking place in here, but 
four out of five stars. I had a good time reading it, so. Alright everybody, so those were the first five books that I read for the month of July 2021. I will have my second part of the wrap up uploaded on Wednesday of this week, so I'll leave that down below if you want to check it out. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!